Hi, welcome to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch with just five colors. Turned out fantastic. I know you think so. That's why you want to learn how to paint this one. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your cameras nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. Let's do it just like this. Hey guys, welcome back. The first time painting in the new studio. Can you believe it? Oh my God, it's going to be so much fun. So I'm going to grab some Bob Ross liquid white. It looks a lot like this. It's fantastic stuff. And what I like to do is shake it up inside the jar. And uh, whatever gets stuck to the lid, that's about as much as we're going to need. And then again, I, I like to put it all over the canvas, not just work it in one corner and then work it all the way. And this is Paint With Josh in a brand new studio. Remember, if this is your first time watching a Paint With Josh video, remember to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We'd love to know. And... This painting is available for sale right now, the way it is. Before I even paint it, you can buy it at 40% off in my Etsy store, which is paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Looks a lot like this. Paint with Josh, big old splatter logo. You can't miss that, right? We did a brand new tutorial on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. We've already taken our Bob Ross liquid white, put it on the canvas just a little bit so you can see all the little dimples in the canvas. Or if you're not wearing gloves, you can see your fingerprint ridges, right? If you can't see your fingerprint and it's really goopy, you know you got too much on your canvas. So we'll go through all of our colors here. Bright red, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white. Brand new video in a brand new studio. Tell me where you guys are watching from and what's your favorite sandwich? We're going to come back here, make sure everything's rocking and rolling. And we're ready to go. So guys, like I said, we got all of our brand new colors. This is my first time painting in the brand new house and I just figured we'd go with like a limited palette. It's gonna be a gorgeous little mountain scene. So I'm gonna take a little of my bright red, just a little onto the brush. Don't need a whole lot. Look at all that gorgeous color, it's fantastic. All right, start dumping a little of it in here. Don't need a whole lot of paint. And just depending on the amount of paint on our brush, right? The pressure we put on our canvas and practice, of course, the three P's of Paint with Josh. Paint, pressure, practice, everybody. Come on now. Don't ever let anyone tell you that they came up with the three Ps. That was a paint with Josh thing all the way, baby. All the way. So again, tell me where you guys are watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I'd love to know. We're going to come in here to our crimson. And again, depending on the amount of paint that we put onto this brush, and then the amount of pressure, look at it change from that lighter red to the darker red. I'm going to come up in here. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, yeah. Leaving a little bit of difference there. Just who knows, wherever. Kind of matching it on the top, matching it on the bottom. And we'll leave little light areas in between. And then we're going to take it and crisscross them all and blend them all out. So don't worry about what it looks like right now, right? Trust in the process, baby. Trust the process. Don't ever listen to your man when he says that, by the way. Trust the process, baby. It's just a Josh thing. Only listen to me, right? Now, we're going to come over here. We're going to take that Prussian blue. And come into our Prussian blue. And again, not too much paint. It's about the same amount of paint each time. Haven't washed the brush one time yet. Look at it. It's turning into this gorgeous little thing. I'm going to come up into here, just start adding some of that blue around. Oh, maybe over here. Maybe leaving a little bit of white right up there. Why not, right? Make it different. Never want to have it all be the same. So bring it down. Maybe bring some of that darkness down underneath here. Why not? We're going to all, we're going to blend it out. It's going to be a little bit different. Yours is going to look a little bit different to Johnny's and Bram's and, and uh, Jonathan's. And I know I already said Johnny, but I was making that one up. I actually know it, Jonathan. <laughs> the Jonathan's and... Everybody, right? Even even the, the great Kevin Hill. I can't believe I actually watched that Gabby interview with Kevin Hill. I normally never watch anyone's videos, but I wanted to see if he was going to mention me. And of course he wouldn't. Like, I didn't mention him. He's not going to mention me, but it would have been funny if he was like, oh, who inspires you recently? He's like, this guy named Paint with Josh. I been, oh God, I would have screen recorded that thing. You would have never heard the end of that. Because I do, I really, like Kevin Hill, I've always, you know, he's the, he's the king. He's the king, man. If you don't know who Kevin Hill is, you're missing out on life because he's way better than me. But don't go watch him. Only watch me, right? He's, he's not over here on TikTok. I'm the biggest one here on TikTok. But Kevin Hill's always been an inspiration to me. He's, he's always had a... I mean, ever since I first started... No, when I first started painting four years ago, he'd already had like 600,000 YouTube subs. Like an impossible number for me to ever reach <laughs> as far as YouTube subs. And he'd already had that. And so it's always been like this, we're chasing after Kevin, trying to, to get to his numbers. And he's at least chasing me over here on TikTok. So <laughs> that's what I love about that. So now you can see, we've taken all this paint. We took a little of our black while I was busy blabbing. 
and we put our black up in the corners and then kind of worked it in just wherever. But you can see there's not a whole lot of streaks. It wasn't a whole big chunk of paint. And you can even see all those colors blend together just turned out fantastic. So we need, we can't keep blending with this brush, right? Otherwise it's gonna blend all this stuff out and it's gonna take it and turn it all into this dark color. And that's not what we want. We need to keep this nice little thing. So we're gonna take our brush and dip it into our thinner. Let me, oh geez, almost fell over. Don't fall over on the first day in the brand new studio, Josh. I'm gonna come up here and it looks like I'm dipping the whole brush into the thinner, but actually the paint thinner is just about there and the brush is just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit in. Right? You don't have to soak the entire bristles of your brush. That's not good. You're gonna have way too much thinner in there. And the reason I spin it is to keep all the stuff contained, right? As I'm spinning it in this area of emptiness, it's allowing all of that stuff to hit the edges of the cup and fall back down so I can reuse it, right? Now we're gonna put this back in its new place, which is still strange to me. It doesn't belong over there. We're gonna shake it into a cup and then I bring out the old beater bucket, right? The old beater bucket is just a five gallon bucket with a golf ball basket in it. And here's the story about the golf ball basket, right? So my very first time painting, we get the brushes, we get the paints, we get the palette, we get the easel, we get the canvases. So like hundreds of dollars, right? To try this new hobby out. And I'm looking at this beater bucket thing going, do I really have to spend more money to clean the brush? Let me go out in the garage. And I went in the garage and I found a, a golf ball basket that I've had for years, because I've played golf since I was five years old. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty good, guys. I was, my best, my best round ever was a, a minus two, but that's not, well, it's a different thing. But, so I go out and I find this golf ball basket and I go, okay, well, it's like crisscross like this. I should be able to beat the devil out of the brush and keep it all contained in the bucket. And then I, well, I won't spray it around the house. It's not gonna get all over the paintings or me or anything. It'd be fantastic. And then eventually I'll go buy the real brush cleaning thing. And 40 years later, I still have the same exact bucket down in my, in my little five gallon bucket. You can get those five gallon buckets at like Lowe's or Home Depot, your local hardware store. It's got five gallon buckets for days. Okay, so we've taken our brush, we've washed it, we've dabbed it on a paper towel so we get all that color out of there, all the wetness, right? Very little amount of wetness in the brush now. Now we can come up into our lightest area. And we're gonna crisscross back and forth. And remember guys, you can name this painting before we even get finished, and you can buy it right now. If you wanted to purchase it, it's 40% off. You can go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Head over there. A lot of the times they sell during the stream. Sometimes they don't, which is fine. I get to take it down to work and show it off to the people down at work. And then sometimes they buy it or I get to look at it for a while and then eventually it sells. But some of the times they go very fast. So if you want it, you gotta make sure that you get in there and get it while you can, because there are a lot of hardcore fans that watch every stream and they buy quite frequently, right? So if you wanna buy it, you better get in before Anna or Nicole or Melanie comes in, snags it out from underneath you. It's happened before, it'll happen again. Look at all these different colors. A little bit of reddish pink, we got our darker crimsony pink, got this white, got the blue, got the black and gray, all these colors everywhere, it's fantastic. Fantastic, and just simply like that. We don't even need to really paint any clouds. We're going to, but we don't need to. But we're going to. Oh, we're going to. So again, guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? You're about to see the most wicked clouds you've ever seen right here on the Paint With Josh Show. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> I think I've gone crazy with exhaustion. Definitely crazy with exhaustion. Look at those colors. That's wicked. It almost looks orange uh, through the camera, but here it's pink, I swear. It's like pinkish, bright pink, a little bit more pinky. All right, let's throw some clouds in here, guys. So in order to throw clouds, I used to use a palette knife all the time because I think it works better, but a lot of people have problems using a palette knife. And so we found a different way. If we use our, our little fan brush and we go through all of this big, thick white paint and a lot more when we're painting a white canvas with a lot of color versus when we're painting a black canvas, we use a very, very, very small amount of paint, right? So my brush is completely loaded just loaded full of paint. I'm gonna come just right around all that beautiful color and just write somebody's name. I don't know. Or just a mess, whatever you wanna do, right? Write in cursive like that language that the kids don't know, right? If they try to take over, we're all gonna start writing notes in cursive and then they're gonna be confused about what's happening. They won't know our battle strategies. Let's see, let's come up here too. Why not just make the cloud the whole length of the canvas? It just looks gorgeous. Right, and if you're an OG like me, or Bram, or Bob Ross himself, or Steve Ross, Bob's son, right? Everyone asks me, are you Bob's son? No, 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 I'm just a fan that taught myself how to paint. So grab your two inch brush or your one inch brush, whatever's easier for you, right? 
I'm gonna come up here and I'm not using the whole two inches at one go, right? I'm never touching, unless we're blending, I'm never touching all the bristles on. I'm actually only touching them just the top corner, right? Few couple bristles at the top is all we're using. And very lightly, we're gonna take and start to mix that. And as it mixes down, watch this. It's gonna start to blend with all those colors around it, underneath it. You get all these little bright areas and dark areas. It looks like the clouds are just falling down. You never see when it rains, like it drags the clouds down like that. And you can have yours look well, however you wanna see it, right? I got a little brush here in there. Get out there, get up on out there. And just by softening them, right? Blending them out and softening them. Look at the difference between this side and that side. We're not even fully done over here, right? If I wanted to, if I really looked at it without any glare, we could really make them soft, but we wanna leave little areas of bright, little areas of dark, little things, no hard lines, no straight things, no obvious brush marks, right? Now we'll come over here. Just same thing, criss uh, counterclockwise circles is all I'm doing. Just kind of grabbing the paint, letting the bristles rotate around just the slightest bit. It's even hard to show myself on camera, right? But just getting I'm not even a lot of paint on the brush. Look, there's nothing there. There's nothing there, right? Maybe sometimes we go clockwise, dragging it up and pushing it out, right? Get a little fluff of wind, a little gust. Blows that cloud, uh, cloud up, right? You can do that with all your other ones if you want to. Change it, you can do whatever you want. You can have little things. Looks like something's happening right here. I don't know what it is, but something is happening right here. Don't know, but I like it. All right, we're gonna come in here just like that. Remember, you get to name this painting. If nobody buys it, then I get to choose who gets to name the painting, and then I give you an awesome shout out. And we're about to start giving out shout outs for the three Ps, guys. And don't just write the three Ps right now. If you write the three Ps right now, you're disqualified, okay? We're gonna start giving shout outs for the three Ps of Paint with Josh when we start doing our mountains, right? Very vital. For clouds, for mountains, for trees, for the sky, for initially on the canvas, right? We talked about the three Ps. So if you were here in the beginning, then you're gonna know. Or if, you just, if you're watching the YouTube video and you scrolled through to this point, we're about to talk about the three Ps. So I hope you got I hope you caught that section in the beginning and you didn't scroll past it, right? And we're giving shout outs, people. We're giving shout outs. Let's do it. So tell me where you're watching from. I'm about to come back there, check behind the camera, see all this cool stuff. We're gonna do one little contrail real quick because anytime I do a gorgeous little sky, I love adding London's mom to it. And it's just a, a soft little reminder of, you know, her and how we lost her and what she means to me. and. You know, every time I do a very, very, very pretty sky that I'm very proud of, she goes into it. So, just like that. Tell me where you guys are watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Let's see. What do we got? Budapest. That's cool. The UK. Let's see. Do you have these painting sets recorded on YouTube? Yes, I do. I have tons and tons on YouTube.com slash paint with Josh. We got Texas, California, Cape Breton, Alabama, Pennsylvania, Texas, Bend, Oregon, I thought it said bend over. Minnesota, Seattle, Florida, Sweden, Indiana, let's see, Tennessee, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Alabama, Louisiana, Virginia, Canada, Lithuania. That's awesome. Manchester, Wicked, Tasmania, Bosnia, Finland, St. George, Utah. That's not too far away. That's only about an hour and a half away from where we are. Right down here in Vegas, we got Jersey, Michigan, Arizona, Arizona, Eugene, Jersey, Arizona, Man, you guys are killing it. You guys are killing it. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's come in here and we're going to talk about the three P's of paint with Josh. Now, no matter what we're doing, we're going to take, we're going to mix up a little bit of our black and crimson and blue, and then we're going to chit chat for a minute. So no matter what we're doing, whether it be clouds or a mountain or this or that or a tree or the canvas, we're gonna be using three Ps, right? The three Ps of Paint with Josh, and that's about the 100th time I've said it. Maybe it's set into your brain by now. The amount of paint on our brush or tool is the first P, the amount of paint, right? What is the second P? Can somebody tell me the second P as I scoop this up and we come up in here and just make this gigantic, just enormous mountain staying right underneath those clouds? But anybody tell me the second P? The first person to say the second P gets a shout out. Let's see. Let's see. Oh my God, I got paint with Bram saying the three Ps. Get out of here. So let's see, Heaven's Function Addiction. She gets the shout out. They get the shout out because they were the first person that I saw that said it there. And I can't believe Bram knows the three Ps of paint with Josh. That's so awesome. Don't be trying to steal my three Ps, Bram. 
Don't be sorry. Like Bram was like a. I was. I. I. I had a. You know. I was. I was a. I had a thing for Bram. I mean, I didn't like Bram because he was better than me. Was better than me. <laughs> and uh, I'm very competitive. You know what I mean. And uh, yeah, but I. I love Bram, and I can't believe Bram. Paint with Bram knows the three P's of paint with Josh. That's literally blows my mind. Like Bram paints with Bob's actual son, Steve Ross, and. Uh, and does awesome, like, classes with him. You can go book classes through Bram's website. I think it's paintwithbram.com. You can go book classes with him and Steve Ross. Like, oh, what I wouldn't give to live where you guys live over there. My goodness. I had to move over to a new house over here in Vegas. So, you can see, we've taken our paint and just pff, made a giant mess on this canvas, right? Now, since we've talked about the second P of paint with Josh, because the first P is the amount of paint that we have on our on our tool or our brush, right? Which in this case, we have zero paint on the brush. So we asked what the second P was and uh, we got an answer. And that was uh, pressure, right? So depending on the amount of pressure that we push, we can slide that mountain all the way off the edge or just barely move it at all. You know what I mean? How much pressure are you putting on it? How much, like it's, you know, it's prom night. How much pressure are you putting on this poor mountain right here? Look, we're gonna pull the other direction, bam. Just like that, making this little valley in between, just from pulling it this way instead of this way, right? We pulled this way in a little bit, a couple areas, and then whoosh, pulled that way, all of a sudden, poof, you got a 3D mountain right here, right? Little valley, maybe this guy came down and met up with that little valley, right? Or like, or watch this, with a lot of pressure, whoosh, slid all the way through that valley, took the whole thing out, and now it's a whole nother slope, right? Just with the amount, the second P. So I'm gonna ask you guys, what is the third P? A paint with Josh. The first person to tell me the third P of paint with Josh gets a shout out like I gave to Bram, which who was the second person to tell me the second P. But third, first, uh, sorry, third P. Who's got the third P of paint with Josh? Let's see the first, I should say just the first person that I come, that I see when I say it there. Oh my God, Heaven's Addiction again? Oh no, Kim, okay, who we got? God, I gotta scroll back way too far. Brianna Doucette. She, is that Chris Doucette's wife? Brianna Doucette? That's awesome. Everyone that knows painting knows, firstly, paint with Josh, baby. And secondly, the three Ps. Because who in the world would have ever thought of the three Ps? Only a crazy person like paint with Josh would have ever come up with the three Ps. And I don't even know how I did it. I mean, you guys know how I paint, but I don't know how. I was like, oh, paint pressure practice. Ooh, that's something we can market, isn't it? Oh yeah, I don't even know how I have this much energy. Like I've been moving for three days straight. I moved my house, then we moved London's house, and uh, there's still a, a mountain of stuff to move for London's house, but well, I think we're gonna get movers for that because I am just tired, <laughs> tired. I even had to take off work. I went into work for like three hours today and I was like, can I go home? I have to move. <laughs> this is horrible. I don't wanna go home. I would rather stay at work all day, but no. They made me leave and go home and pack and move boxes and boxes and boxes. Oh, that was horrible. So, remember guys, time to check in. Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Remember to hit that follow button. Give me a, you know, subscribe if you can. Pay for the channel. I, it, everything helps me buy more canvases, more brushes, more paints. You can always help me get more supplies by going to my Amazon store, which is amazon.com slash shop slash paint with josh how about that how do you guys like the new uh the new hologram stickers those things are rad little paint with josh hologram sticker freaking awesome <laughs> freaking awesome okay let's do I, I, I love hyping up my own stuff Wait, what do you guys think about this yeah i'll answer it for you it's freaking awesome okay we're gonna come over here grab that blue grab a little bit of our white a little bit more white than blue right because we get the blue is so powerful it'll take over all that white so we're gonna mix them all up just like this, scraping up a little bit of our darker color, mixing that in there too, right? Get that deep, dark, bluish, grayish color. It's awesome, it's fantastic. Now we're gonna make up a little bit of our snowy color too by taking a lot more white on this go than the first go and taking the teeniest little bit of the blue that we mixed, not the pure blue, the blue that we mixed, right? And that way it stays this bright, bright, bright color. That's probably even too much, Joshy. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make a secondary pile of white down here. There we go, that's much better. See, even the difference between the smallest little bit where you get that little bit of white and your little bit of blue, that little extra bit of blue versus that. See how much darker it made it? 
So, I mean, we could use this as the highlight. We could use this as shadow one, shadow two, and shadow three, and that would work out just fine. So let's come over here. Since we do everything in threes, right? We have three shadows and the three P's of paint with Josh. I like to do my, Bob Ross did the highlights first, which I find more difficult if you're a beginner to do, because it was more difficult for me when I very first started. So I like to do the shadows first. So let's decide, who knows, maybe our light source and this guy, he's just off the back. And we'll just pretend there's this little ridge, right? Because we can make it however we want to make it. We could scrape it, we could pull it down further. We could change the angle. We could go all the way over here if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. Your mountain, right? It's not my mountain, it's your mountain. Let's take a little bit off the back half of this little peak in there, right? Let me get off the back half of this guy. Maybe he had a little ridge or a little valley in between him and that section over there. And then this big, beautiful guy back here, we're gonna let him slide down just like that. Very soft, right? What are we using? We already have the paint and I know we went over it once, but maybe you just tuned in. So what's the second P of Paint With Josh? I'm gonna give you a shout out. Second P of Paint With Josh, guys. 888 people, that's cool. Here we go, first person that's coming in, I can feel it. Heaven's Addiction or Fiction Addiction. Man, you guys are awesome. Plus Mystique, the, Curi uh, the Curious Crystal, all Call of Duty, Doe, Anna Kay. Look at all you guys, Becky, all you guys. Wicked, wicked, right? We're using pressure. The second P of paint with Josh, pressure. That's not what we want. Where'd all that white paint come from? But look, you scrape it, make it go away, right? It actually made it look cooler. Have it mixed down here. It's getting darker and darker and darker, and then poof, we'll come back and hit it with a little piece of white on that side, right? Maybe have our white come down and connect in here. Everywhere that is now a gray color is our bright white highlights. Just like that. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go to shadow two first, right? We were in, sorry, shadow two is here. We're gonna go into shadow one, and then I'll show you. Let's go into shadow three first. Come over to shadow three, that real deep, dark color, throw it right over the tip top in just some places, right? Doesn't have to go crazy. Don't want to have too much, but every so often on these mountains, you just get an area where it's just so sharp that you can't, the snow won't build up on top, right? It's too, it's too sharp. It catches too much sun. It gets too warm. Whatever the reason is, it won't allow it to build. And look, we almost forgot about this little ridge that I just looked at at the camera and saw, right? And that just adds another little piece of depth to the mountain. Very, very cool. Okay, let's go into shadow one. That almost white, but a little bit darker blue than our white, and then we also have here, right? So we got highlight one, which is also shadow one, highlight, super highlight, right? Highlight three. So we'll come in here, go into our shadow one, highlight one, come up here, and maybe we're gonna go down towards the middle because maybe we'll get our very bright whites up around the top. All right, start sliding it down. Just look how it breaks like that. Okay, we're gonna go into our highlight two, which is our second brightest color versus our pure white. We get a little bit brighter up in there. Starts to feed its way down, get these little cool things. You gotta worry about your angles and watch. You can take like a little sequin pillow, slide some of that darkness back over, letting it blend in, letting it change, letting it mix. All right, you wanna have those little differences in there. Go back in with our dark black. There we go. Not the black, the shadowy color. You guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. Don't mention black. I put out that one little reel or TikTok video and uh, it sort of went a little nuts. The, uh, this lady had, it was like, oh, Bob Ross didn't use pure black. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's the color, it, the literal name of the color is Bob Ross Midnight Black. That's the name. Like, it, of course he used black. And so I put out this whole little reel. It was funny. It's got a lot of people laughing. So same thing, that little bit of brighter color. Not into our pure white though, right? If you can avoid using the pure white way off here in the distance, avoid it. Because you don't want your pure white way out here when you want to have it closer to you in the foreground. And look what we just did. So I've been having my, my knife like this the whole time. We've been feeding it and feeding it. And then all of a sudden I turned it, went at the same angle and popped it off in a different direction, right? Got this guy, I would actually look cool if there's a little shadow in that hill. So we'll take this guy and pull it down over here, right? Pressure, the amount of paint, the amount of pressure, right? And what's that last thing again that makes it, what's that that, that, that completes the peas? What's that last thing we talk about? The first person who says it's gonna get a shout out. I'll tell you that right now. What's that last thing? Oh, Heaven's Fiction Addiction again. Man, she just wants me to say her name a lot today. Heaven's Fiction Addiction. And now you are disqualified from answering any further questions because you can just do it faster than anybody else. No, I'm just kidding, Heaven's Fiction Addiction. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I have ADD, so I might be reading it incorrectly. Look at that, oh, it's just fantastic. 
Before I run out of my brightest bright color, I need to come up here to the tip top of our mountain where it's gonna get hit the most brightly. Maybe even with our pure white, we can sneak just a, just a touch. And watch as we change the angle of the knife and throw these little bits off the side of it, right? They don't all have to be the same. It's not all the same thing all the time, right? Even that color change, a little bit different. Have it fade from the white down to the blue, down to the darkness. You get all these cool little things happening. All right, maybe we came up over here, a lot brighter white at a steeper, sharper angle, like it came down and hit and changed, right? Differences, differences. Take this guy over here. Just messing around with it, right? That's all you gotta do, play with it until you like how it looks. And my grandpa always said, if you play, if you shake it more than twice, you're playing with it. But sometimes you got to go more than twice, especially with this, with the knife, just to get it to go. You know what I mean? That's, we're talking, we're talking about painting here, folks. Painting, painting, painting. But he did. He seriously told me that. If you shake it, shake it more than twice, you're playing with it. Funniest thing. My grandpa's the funniest guy. Grandpa Homie. I don't know why we call him Grandpa Homie. Well, I think I do know why. I think he's embarrassed of his first name, but... As Kurt, he was a, I mean, he's my grandpa, right? So he was born a long time ago. Um, I can't even, in the forties, maybe, um, maybe in the fifties. I'm, I'm, I sound like a horrible grandson, but his name is a, his full name anyway. Well, his first name is Marion, right? And, uh, today we have football players like Marion Barber and Marion Lynch or Marshawn Lynch, right? Like all these different football players with sort of kind of girly names, right? And, Marion back then was kind of a girly name and grandpa didn't like it. And so he went by his middle name instead, which I won't give out because, you know, because we're on the internet. But uh, yeah, his last name's not the same as mine anyway. So good luck trying to find him. And um, yeah, it was cool though. He's always gone by his, uh, his middle name, which is always, I, I don't know, stood out strange to me, but I guess he just didn't like his first name. Nothing you can do about it, right? You don't like it, change it. There we go. All right, now, just based on that pressure, on a little bit of the amount of paint that we had, the pressure, and a little of practice, right? We get our mountain. And just like this, we're gonna very lightly, so, so, so lightly. And the beginners, I do not suggest you go all the way to the top. I've had a lot of that third P at doing this, right? You might not have had a lot of that third P yet of doing this, trying to get yourself all the way up here and making it nice and soft, right? Some of the times it's easy too if you just pull it down just a little bit, a little bit of pressure. Don't want to mess up all those cool little things, right? Feed it back up, up into the mountain. You see me turn the brush this way as we feed it because all of our swipes were going down here. So you have to feed them all up that way. And if you're close enough, if you got enough room and then a little bit of pressure, just soften stuff down. That's all you need to do. A little bit softer. It helps push it further off in the distance in our brains and, uh, makes everything easier to do. Especially when we come in with our foreground. Man, it's hot up in this new studio, my goodness. I got a haircut today, but I didn't have time to do it. Woo! Is it just me? I don't wanna put, I've got the ceiling fan, but if I turn the ceiling fan on, then the camera starts shaking like this back and forth on the, on the tripod. <sighs> All right, let's see what we got. Tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? Well, I just wiped the sweat off of my brow. And uh, we're gonna rock and roll, throw some trees in here, be good to go, man. Certain, but uh, do you mean this afro? It, at the at the cost of being already hot, do you mean this afro? This one? No, you didn't mean this one. Yes, uh, I learned by watching a certain person who had a hairstyle this way. I learned by watching his videos, and uh, just like all of us, right? Most of us who paint like this, learn by watching him, and. Uh, you know, I was given this wig as a, a birthday present uh, for the very first time we bought these paints and brushes. My wife got me the wig too, it was fantastic. And yeah, I've had this wig. It goes to events with me. I wear it when we're on the road, I jam. <laughs> I don't think I've ever driven with it, but I wear it when we're out doing events. And uh, yeah, it's I love this wig. So hopefully I've earned a follow by putting on this hot, hot sweaty wig for you. Man, look at that sky, that's just fantastic. Just quite literally fantastic. And with the amount of pressure that we can push, right? Leaving all that little bit of mist back in there. Very cool. And again, I like coming up a little bit and just change it. I don't want my mist to be the same level, right? So we'll come up, we'll bring it down, come up here a little bit higher, just so it's a little different. And again, softening it up. 
And that way it comes up, it comes down, it comes a little bit higher, goes a little bit lower. You have all these little different levels of your mist back in there, right? So that's why it's, that's why they call it mist, because it's mysterious. What's happening back there? That's what I want to know. What's happening with my hair? Probably get paint all up in my hair. I got paint all up in my hair, man. I paint everywhere. I paint everywhere. <laughs> Josh is an idiot. Okay, I'm going to come in here just so, so, so lightly with the brush. And again, I don't suggest the beginners do that part. It's, uh, you need a very, very, very light touch. And your mountain's going to look awesome no matter what. You don't have to do that section. It's only when you start getting a little bit better at that light touch that you can get in there and soften that little bit of snow back there. So, lesson of the day for making mountains anyway, use less, less is more, right? Less is more, especially on black canvas, but for your first couple mountains, less is more. Even if your snow only gets to the, the top and then it breaks way up here, less is more, baby, because those cool breaks are what you're gonna be looking at. And the more you go over those cool breaks, the more you're gonna destroy them and then be mad at yourself for uh, for ruining those little cool little things. Oh yeah, a little bit darker, deeper, darker shadow, just by touching in there, scraping, swiping, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Looks awesome. All right, now I mixed up a bunch of my three favorite colors, the blue, the crimson, and the black, right? That crimson is that deep, dark red. You've got your Prussian blue, which is the deeper, darker blues, and our black color mixed together, make this color, which looks very black, right? But if you actually take a little bit of white, and mix it in. It's like a very, it's like a lavendery purple color, right? And we don't want a lot of white on the brush. Not for this section anyway. So I'm gonna get that white and wipe it off, fling it off, beat the devil out of that old brush. And let's come in and just load it up with this guy right here. All right, we're gonna load into the bristles, flipping the brush over so we get it on both sides, flipping it over again. And last time, flip it over again, like five, six, seven times through the, the paint and you get this chiseled edge. It's like you could go out there and chop wood with this thing. If it was on the end of a, of, a, of an axe, like, bam, chopping a piece of wood with that because it's so chiseled, right? We're gonna come in here, it's chiseled like my non-abs, like my fluffy abs. I'm gonna come over here, let's take this little guy. I don't wanna do too much on the sides. We're gonna come in and start right there. And you see how we pop down? I like coming down a little bit. Maybe we'll come up, we'll come down, just like a heart monitor, right? Because they're never, the trees aren't ever all growing the same and they don't all grow in this progression where it's, you know, lower to taller, right? It's not just a straight up, you know, diagonal line. That's not how they happen to me anyway. So let me go back. I'm going to load the brush again because as they start to, as you start to lose paint, you start to lose those sharp little tips, right? And those sharp tips are what's going to make them look really cool when we pull them up here later. Now we're going to come up. Maybe we'll come up on this side. You don't even need to go off to the side of the canvas. It's so much fun. You just sit there and, and tap and you're like, oh, this is neat. Well, this is nice. This is neat, right? And then, boom, you finished off the edge of the canvas already, and you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to go all the way off the edge. There we go. There we go. Right? Just bringing all that color down. You see what I'm doing? He's like hitting it again, just with the top half of the brush. Just kind of pulling that color down, letting it mix. All right? This is gonna be. Oh, I'm gonna put so. I'm gonna put another mountain in here. It's gonna be fantastic. Letting it mix down like that, right? Now we're gonna take this, and because we have these little sharp tips at the top. Ooh, look at those things just streak upwards, right? With the right amount of what? With the right amount of what? We obviously have no paint on the brush, so what are we talking about, guys? The second P of Paint with Josh. Here comes the shout out. Pressure, the first person I saw was 74 Press Ag 74. So they get the shout out. I can't scroll up all the time. The right amount of pressure on the canvas, right? We could take these trees and really smush them and really drag. But as I come up to the tip top, I pull away, right? And that way I don't go up into my snow with the bristles of the brush. And we're only touching into the trees. And then we pull away, and we pull away, and then we pull away. It's just like making a circle, but we're only touching it in a certain spot, right? Now we're gonna come in with this brush. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from and what's your favorite sandwich. Somebody screenshot this right now. Count how many trees we painted. Because when I go to make the video, I'm gonna say, this is how you paint a thousand trees in a minute. And if it's not really how you, if it's not really a thousand, then I'm lying. So can someone tell me how many trees are right here? Screenshot and count the tips for me, please, so I can use it in later videos. So we're gonna take our tip of our brush like this, and just like that, come in from the side. Coming up, right? Now watch, look at my foam, uh, my foam, my mist. It's all the same height, right? Same thing across. That's not what we want. We wanna come up a little bit. We wanna go down a little bit. We wanna come up again. 
to go down, just like we did with our trees, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right? And that way you have different areas of, of texture and detail. I was about to go like this, detail, I'm doing it behind the canvas, you guys can't see back here as I rest my arm. This is so chill in this new studio. Oh, I love this house. Oh, it's fantastic. London got a fabulous house too. Oh man, it's a little far out there, but it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I can't wait to go over there and feed her animals while she's out of town, just so I can hang out. There we go. Now we're gonna take this guy and just crisscross strokes. We've already tapped the base. We've turned it into all this mist. And so we can crisscross it, right? That's why we don't try to really match the sky to the, the bottom of the canvas all that well. Because we're only really catching a little of that pink down here, right? In the midst of the trees. Adds distance, adds depth. Very simply, very easily done. Just like so. Bam! Get that whole thing. And you decide what you want to do. A lot of times, sometimes I'll look out there and I'll see there's like a little pathway. And it starts growing out of the forest, out of the mist, and it starts coming at me, right? And I can see it. I go, ooh, okay, this is gonna, if we do this path over here and then maybe we cut the path back and it comes back here, whatever, right? And then you can do whatever you want. Maybe you see a cabin, right? Maybe you got a little cabin out here and he's just chilling off in your scene. It's just a very crude little thing, right? But you, maybe you got a little cabin out there just chilling, right? In your brain, what, whatever you see, right? That's what it is. Maybe you got a little cabin out there and he's sitting out and then you can go, okay, you step back and you go, all right, no. I don't like the I don't like the cat. It's either too small or it's not big enough or it's not in the right spot. So guess what? Take your brush. Work it, man. Work it. Look, watch. It's gone. It's already gone. It was never there to begin with, right? That's the magic of this liquid white stuff, right? This stuff, the stuff that we put on in the beginning of the of the painting. This is what we cover our entire canvas with, right? This stuff allows that to happen where you can literally blend it away. And it's blending away because it's mixing in with all of the white paint underneath, right? Fantastic little thing. So I didn't want to make a little house or a path. I want to do a little mountain. So we're going to take a little bit of our tree mix, the same color we just did the trees with, but we're not going to put it right up here where it's the deepest, darkest part of the tree, right? Otherwise, those colors aren't going to stand apart from each other. But if we come down here into the mist, look at how much darker the paint is down here now, right? So anything that we do, and we can come up with another little bit of Rocky Mountain mist right in here, right? Chuck a whole nother little thing down. Maybe this guy falls this way. And all these little things. And look at that deep darkness, right? Leaving all of that thick paint up there. And up here, I scraped as much of it off as I could. Down here, I wanna leave it. I wanna come up a little bit higher, help push those trees off in the distance, right? Push them back behind this little rock, this little mini mountain. This little jaggedy little thing, whatever this little, whatever this little Alanis Morissette jaggedy little pill thing is right here, right? I love it. Whatever it is, I love it. You know what's cool too? Now I can almost see there's a pathway coming out around this little rock leading into our foreground, right? That's what I see to me. And you guys might see something different. Now, what are we going to do? We've already talked about the first P of paint. We've talked about all three, right? But we're going to ask for the number one. What's the first P of Paint with Josh? First person gets a shout out. If you answer me with all three P's, you are disqualified. First person gets a shout out. Number one, <laughs> Heaven's Addiction, Fiction Addiction again. You guys are awesome. Mina Stardust knows it too. Z Squad. Everyone knows paint, right? What's the second P, guys? Give me the second P. It's what? What am I about to say with our second P? Oh, geez, do it with a two inch brush, by the way. Oh, jeez. Look at that, dude. Just by pulling it to the side, you can decide what you want it to look like. You decide what you want your ground to look like. Whatever. All right? Maybe we want it to be a little bit more like this. So we'll take it over here. Maybe this guy gets that pulled this direction. Just because, right? Got a little bit going here, a little bit going there. Let's see. Did we answer? Did we answer? Pressure. That's right. And I know you guys probably said it a bunch, but what's that say? Thiago CJ, I think that's what it's supposed to be. Good job for the pressure. All right, we're gonna go over here. And I know a lot of people said it and I wasn't back there to read it. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Now look, I can either take this, watch this with my pressure, right? Pushing real far or real hard, we can drag that whole mountain out, right? Or very softly, it doesn't have to move at all. We can keep all that darkness right where it is, right? So that's what the pressure is, that second P. 
Now, just like our sequin pillows, right? We can take that color and feed it back up itself. See that? And we're taking the color and we're pushing it backwards. You slide it one way, you slide it the other way. That's the greatest part about these oils. They stay wet and they allow you to do really, really, really cool things. Okay. This side, I want to make foggy on purpose right here because I want to put a little tree right there. And you don't want to have a lot of paint on the canvas right where you're trying to stack more paint, right? You got to have it blend down and become that softer color. All right, this is just gorgeous, just like that. I think I can just see a little pathway in my brain. You guys brought it out and now I can just see it. And I think we're going to come over the edge with that. Man, that looks cool even how it is right there. You can even put more trees at the bottom. We can do whatever we want, but whatever we do, we better do it quick because I am sweating bullets up here. I don't know why it's so dang warm. Is my AC on? I have no one to help uh, to ask me to help either. Like I can't go London. Is the AC on? Because London's not here. No, guys. Bailey's then Bailey's hanging out with London. So we're gonna take our blue, our shadowy side, right? Pull it off to the edge. Again, we're deciding what we want it to look like just based off the colors and everything else that we can pull. And then you can go back and and uh, adjust your highlights, right? Now I'm gonna come back in. Mixing up that light color, our white, with this tiniest amount of blue, just again so it's not pure white, right? We don't have to have it be pure white. There we go, gorgeous. Scrape that guy up, good old chunk. Maybe we'll come down in here, maybe you had a whole little thing, maybe you got a bit going off this way. Because why not, right? It's our little mini mountain, we can do whatever the crap we want to do with it. And we had these guys, maybe they connected back here. Ooh, that looks like a face almost, that's kind of cool. Right? Maybe an old man, time some beard down here some old white beard or grow down that way right come over here just the smallest little things all right we're gonna go scrape up some paint change our angle pull it down pressure practice and paint baby right paint pressure practice with anything whether you're doing a mountain or a little mini rock or whatever, a cloud, some trees, paint, pressure, practice. I have merch with that on it. Paint, pressure, practice. Got shirts, they're actually gonna be delivered here in a couple of days to my new house. And I can't wait to see. Put them on, they're gonna be great. Ah, oh, it's gonna be great. Okay, a little bit more of that blue, just over the black, the littlest bit, picking up a little of those colors here, there, and everywhere. Helps them blend in, oh, just like that. Oh, some blend in. Get those breakage areas. That's what we're really after, right? All that breakage. Get our blue back in here. A little bit more of that black. Just the smallest little bit right off the top. Oh, that's fantastic. I am digging that. I don't know what that one little black spot is, but he's annoying me. There we go. Come up here. Little things, there we go. We're gonna adjust the edge of our little ridge over there a little bit more, oh yeah. All right, take this guy, pull him over to the side. If you pull the slightest bit off to that, that shadowy side, it almost makes it look rounder. Like it's getting a little bit of light pulling over the edge, you know what I mean? Makes that roundish look, kind of cool. We'll get cool little details back there like that too. Little things, but we're not trying to make it all the same color, right? We don't wanna have the same amount of white over here as we do over here. And you guys gotta give me just a second. Look at that sweat that's coming off my head. It is definitely turning into summer in Las Vegas. I gotta go see if my air conditioning's on. My goodness. Are you kidding me? It wasn't even on. Oh, it's on, it's gonna be on now. It's not in my name yet, so it's gonna be on now. Oh yeah, baby. You know when you go to a hotel, as soon as you get to the hotel, you crank that sucker down like as far as humanly possible. Yeah, it's not my name yet. <laughs> Let's see. So we're gonna come in with that same old brush, right? That we did our trees with, that we did the mountain with, we pulled it out, we did all that stuff. We're gonna come in here and just very lightly, softening those things. I'm gonna probably go back and put some more. Actually, it looks kind of cool like that. That looks cool. We're gonna leave it like that. Right, now watch. This bit, I don't wanna pull straight up this way like these ones because guess what? We went a different direction. All right, so you can very lightly pull down with the right amount of what? What are we doing? Are we, are we really pushing hard? Or are we pushing softly with the right amount of what, guys? Pressure X Morty. I think that's what that was. 
I'm not the best at uh, screen names and stuff, so if I said it incorrectly, I'm sorry, but they knew the right amount of pressure is key. With the right amount of pressure, we can do anything, right? We can have you think it's this, we can have you do that, we can have it pull over here, we can soften it, we can go down this way, we can do all sorts of stuff. And all it does, to me, it makes it look more like a photo. Like when you have a little out of focus section of a photo, and then some places are more in focus. And then you got some out of focus bits. And then you got a section that's in focus. Because not everything is going to be perfect, right? Oh, I just want to see more light down here. It's just fantastic. Just fantastic. And again, same angle. Going up. All right. Now I'm going to tap at that guy. So we got to have, we got to use some of that white. See how we're dragging it up this way? Using some of that white to create its own little bit of mist. All right. Then we can come in here. And watch this, we'll go above the horizon even, have it blend in with the mist back there. We'll put some trees down instead of a pathway. We'll do whatever we wanna do, right? That's the most fun, most fun thing. And this is very vital to the technique as well, right? Especially if you wanna put something down in front of it. You have to soften those little areas of paint. You have to get rid of that stuff, right? And in my mind, I see some more trees like that. We could go in the front, we could do tall ones, we could do short ones. We could do anything we wanted to do. Literally anything. What if we took a little bit of that blue shadowy paint and we just pulled it out back here? Just some of that blue shadow. Get that back in there. That looks kind of cool. All right, let's rock and roll. Let's just do it quick. Let's get a little bit on our fan brush. And who knows, maybe we had a little bit of pathway come back. Maybe it came down this way. Maybe it came back this way. Right, just rocking and rolling its way down the mountain, trying to be as straight as we can be. That's kind of cool. I like that. That's neat. All right? Watch this, actually. Take this guy back here. Turn him into, like, cliffs, bro. Bro, turn him into cliffs. All right, these cliffs in the front, though, they got to be much darker. More cliffage. All right, then we can come out here. We can highlight it. Take that guy back that way, up the mountain. Come back this way. Got our cliff. That's gonna look neat, guys. That's actually really cool. Now we're gonna take our brush just like we do with a seascape. And you pull that sand, very lightly, pulling that sand down, right? Don't wanna do it too many times. Come back here, a little bit more on this guy because I want him to blend a little bit more, right? This one has to stay darker. He's a little bit closer. And we're actually gonna pop out in front of this, this lighter one too. So a little bit more blending, but leave those streaks. That's the bit of the mountain ridge or whatever this is that's back here. It's wicked, that's what it is. That guy even so much lighter because we don't want to see so many little bits of our little mountain ridge back there, right? And it gets very, very, very small back there. Very small, very faded, very far away. Take that guy, oh, that's gonna be cool. Oh, that's gonna be cool, you guys. That's gonna be cool. Okay, let's take a little bit more of our dark paint on our fan brush, just like this. And we're gonna come and extend this bit of darkness out in front of that cliff that's back there, right? So our road would in fact come to there and then it would shift back and then it would shift back again. See what I mean? Very cool, very cool. And it all depends of course on how we highlight it, how many little scraggly peaks and creeks and little things are hanging from the edge. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's fantastic. All right, a couple little bits hanging off the edge of this guy. Maybe we'll put a tree right there. Who knows? Be awesome. It would be awesome. Get a little bit more of our darker paint just for our own eyeballs. So you can see our little pathway going off the edge of this thing. That's going to look neat, guys. Okay, now let's highlight this little bit of roadway. Very cool. Very cool. All right, we're going to get a little of our white. And then mix that guy up with that same little bit of blue that we had creating our same little shadow color, right? That whitish color. Maybe we'll have some snow resting way off there, like we're painting a little river. Way off, right? Maybe you had, we're gonna fix that bit up there. It came down like this. Oh yes, okay, watch this. This little gap where it's a little bit too big. What if we had some stairs, guys, right? Anytime it's too big, I like chucking in a couple little stairs. Just a few little guys. All you need, it helps bring it down to the level where it looks like you could walk on it again, right? In your brain. A couple little stairs. 
I'm gonna come over here, we'll switch back. You're never gonna see all of the roads, so don't try to paint the whole dang sucker, right? And what I mean by that is, I'll show you. As the road's curving up this way, sure, we might be able to see that, but we're not gonna be able to see every single piece of this bit. So it just gets a little line, just a little line of that road. You're not gonna see the whole thing like you're gonna look at it from above, right? So just a little line there. And then as we curve again, guess what? Now we're gonna see more road. So we're gonna use more paint, bringing it down, right? Going back in, filling in our little spots, wherever you think you need to be. Very cool. I like that. That's kind of neat. Maybe we came up here on the edge of this little ledge, pulled a little bit down the side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Joshy. Oh yeah, Joshy. We're gonna come this way now. Taking our little bit. Leave those dark areas though. You have to have them. You gotta have them. It can't all be the same amount of light color or white paint. Look at this. It's like a roadway into the mountains. Woo! Wicked cool. Wicked cool. There we go. Have this guy kind of fall over in different spots. Not everywhere. Not everywhere gets the same amount of drag, right? Not the same amount, but every so often you need a little bit to fall over the edge. Very cool. Again, I never like it to be all the same, so I like putting a little bit of dark spots in there. A couple highlights, a couple dark areas. Never all the same thing. Because when I look at things, it's never always the same. Very cool. Very cool. I like that. So, what we're going to do over here. Before we lose our whole bit of road, let's go ahead and get that black and blue mix only. Black and blue only. It's gonna help stand out away from the color that we added our bright, quote unquote bright, right? This is a dark red, but compared to these other two colors, it's very bright. And I feel a sneeze coming on. And I'm gonna fight it off, fight off that sneeze. Okay, we got our, our bit right on the edge of our brush. And then we're gonna come up here, maybe we got this big old gigantic, just Come down right there, and it might, it might end up getting lost in the mist or we'll do something, we'll figure something out. All right, we're gonna come up here and very lightly just start tapping. Tap, tap, tap. And as we're tapping, right, we've cleared out a lot of the paint behind this area. You can see it's just the bare paint, right? So anytime we're going over anything thick, you're gonna have it start to mix. Look, it's already turning the lighter color on the brush. It's mixing in with that white. So as we're going over, let's flip Let's use the chunkier side. And you wanna have all those little fingers hanging off of the canvas, right? Those little things are the best. And even if we've mixed in with too much white in here, this is a cool thing you can do too. Literally scrape it up. Cause all we're doing is removing the thick mix of paint on there. We're gonna go back into our darker color again so it stays dark, right? There's never, you never have to be dissatisfied. And you're gonna stay darker now because I've scraped away all that white paint. It was our mountain mixture, right? Our, our snowy highlights. And now that we've scraped all that away, we've got this wicked cool tree starting to come to life down here. And the point is it stays nice and deep and dark, right? Just basically mushing the brush into the canvas, coming out, making our little branches every so often. Just all nasty and thick, right? Bing, bang, boom. You don't even have to go all the way to the base. If you don't want to, you don't have to, really. It really doesn't matter. All right, again, we can even take the base of this guy because there's so much mist and fog happening here. And just mist him up. All right, just with the amount of pressure, very lightly, we can decide. Then we can go back. We can pull our road further in front of him if we wanted to. You know what I mean? Get that little mist action back there. Pull some of our mountains down. Have that color drag into the tree. Right? This could be a little rock. This could be a giant path. It could be a skinny path. This could be a giant tree. All depends on what you want it to look like, right? In my mind, the path, the tree is so big that if you were to put a person on this path, he would have to be teeny tiny. Just a teeny tiny little person. So that's a gigantic, mega, prehistoric tree to me. Okay, now if we're gonna stick with our limited palette and highlight this same tree, we need to come in and add a little bit of our darker blue for our deeper, darker shadows, right? I'm just gonna take this straight, deeper, darker blue. We're gonna 
pop it into some of our lighter areas. And so you get that change from the dark black to that little bit of lighter blue in there, right? And all it is, is the teeniest little bit of change for our eyeballs, that's it. It's not meant to be a big thing, right? And you'll see when I take and put our little bit of, uh, of highlight over the top of it, that it really doesn't very much matter. Watch, we're gonna take this guy too. Mix him up into Faug. The Faug! Just like that. There you go. A little bit of blue, you can tell the difference. You got the blue on that side, our dark colors on that side, and you have to have them like that. Oh my goodness, it's so much cooler in here with that air conditioning blowing now. Woo, baby! I thought we were gonna, I thought I made a huge mistake in letting Bailey choose the rooms first. And we're like, uh, Bailey, you're gonna have to sleep in the, uh, the hot room. <laughs> Dad needs to be over here, but no, I can feel it. I can feel it. All right, let's come in. We're going to grab that little bit of liquid white that we took out and put on our little Petri dish, come into our titanium white. Now, this tree is the closest thing to us, right? This is what we've been saving all that bright, bright, bright white for. That's why we've been dulling down our whites everywhere else. So the white right here will stand out as super bright, right? And come up just tip tapping in little places, little things, letting the brush shape do the work, right? tapping. The more we go down, the harder we have to tap because look, it's turning colors. It's changing on us. So I'm going to flip to the fresh side and it's going to be very reactive versus as it feeds itself down, right? I'm just going to tap in little bits and all of a sudden you get this little tree starting to come together. We don't want them to highlight everything, right? Got to have those shadows play off, get deeper and darker. But just with a couple little taps, I call them tappy trees, right? Bob had happy trees. I call mine tappy trees because we tap them in. Got to tap them in. All right, you can take a little bit more of our darker color and you can work some of that darkness back in, especially around the bottom, to have those deeper, darker shadows, right? You can feed all that white back. You can, you let it work how you see it, right? And that's the name of the Paint With Josh game. Come back in, I need just a little, couple little flicks. All right, little things. You can see it's even dulling my, my white color down as I go back and mix with it, right? Bam, a couple little bits, little bits that are different. A little bit here, a little light there, and they get darker and darker on the way down. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. All right, now I need to take, I think here, a little bit of this darker color. We're gonna come out there just get underneath that guy a little bit more. Dang, we should have made it a little darker in the beginning, but it's okay. Just let it work down. Blend it down, blend it down, blend it down. Have that little bit of our, our, um, our ledge, our whatever this thing would be over here. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. I don't know what possessed me to do that one, guys, but I like it. bit deeper darker shadowing back in there have it blend in with this guy very neat very neat i like it and then watch this we can even feed that white of our little pathway back and have the thing change on its own right all depends on what we want it to do it's darker lighter a bit of our darker color back in there too just let it blend and blend and blend and blend very cool very cool that's the best part about these oils, guys. They just, everything, they just do it for you. It just does it on its own. People go, oh, how'd you do that? Well, I kind of did it on its own. I didn't really do much. There we go, tapping at the base. Right in here, bring some of that white down. Bam, 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 bam. A couple little swipes up. I'm not trying to flick our path, right? And if you do happen to flick your path, just go over the side. Right there, very cool. Softens everything down. Bam. Neat, guys. I like that one. I like that one. So, push our tree kind of looks like it's floating now, right? It looks like it's a little floating tree over here. So, let's add a big old bush in there. Because we got the paint on the palette. We might as well. We got the brushes right here. We're going to take that big old, our, our brush, our bush brush, which is just a round brush. It's the half inch round of Bob's set. I'm going to come over here and just tap in a little bit just out there onto just to hide the bottom of that tree, right? Now we don't know if the base 
is covered, you know, if it goes down a little further, what if you got any critters that live inside there? Maybe the path goes back behind it, right? Maybe we take the base, slide it out this way, and our path can change and go the other direction. All depends on what we do with the brush, right? All depends. We'll pull our path right down in front of them, just like that. Very neat. And you know what? That looks really cool. Why don't we make our path a little bit bigger as it's coming down towards us because our perspective needs to change. That's what was throwing my brain off. There we go. Perfection. Got to have our little road be a little bit bigger as it's coming down towards us, right? And then this bit needs to be dark, Josh. It's got to be dark. So take our, if we got to, we'll take our bush making brush just because it's got all that dark color on it really pull it down make it dark gotta have it all right this is like furthest away from our our light source oh yes right there watch even out here and make it all misty like we don't even know where the edge of this guy is there we go bringing it in bam just like that wicked cool okay let's highlight that little bush and then we'll be good to go, guys. I hope you guys have been coming up with a name for this painting. And like I said, you can purchase it if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I don't know if it's been purchased or not. I might be talking out of school here, but if it has been purchased, thank you for your purchase. If not, then uh, I'm going to name uh, the painting based on your guys' name suggestions. So type your name suggestion in the comment below. And uh, we'll see if you get chosen. It's really cool if you end up being the one that gets to name the painting. So sometimes the names that make me laugh get chosen. Sometimes the, the serious names get chosen. So it all depends on the kind of mood that we're in, what strikes me the best and fits the painting the best. You guys tell me, because I want to know what you think. That's wicked. All right, gonna dry off these last few brushes. And then we'll be ready to go. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? How much do you like this painting? Let me know if it's sold. Did someone buy it already? I don't even know. I gotta, I gotta see here. And then we're gonna do the outro for the uh, YouTube video. Don't let me forget to do that. Watching from Montana, wicked. Lost and Found, Mystic Mountain. Lost and Found's kind of cool. Into the Woods, Silent Fog, Misty. Man, thanks for the little flying dog guy. Are you going to add a small person? No. Now that we've added the bushes uh, to the bottom of the tree, the tree perspective has changed, so you would need a normal-sized person in there. Pink Skies, South Africa. Thanks for checking in. Valley of Hope. Let's see, from the UK, Winter Wonderland. Watching from Australia. You guys are awesome. From Sweden, Mountain Mist. A Yeti. That's cool. Winter is coming. Oh, I like that. I love Game of Thrones. Peace Be Still. I kind of like that one, too. I like that. Let's see. The Lost Road. Let's see. Of course, I'm going to add the birds. I got to add the birds. Watch them from South Africa. Watch them from Louisiana. Montana Morning. I like that, too. Let's see. Oh, I like that title. Okay. Dirt Diver 99. You're going to get a follow from Paint with Josh. Dirt Diver 99 has just named the painting Rising. And it's not because they're from my home state of Utah or anything like that. And I might be partial to people from Utah. But no, that's not the reason. I love that title. It's an awesome title. So thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for that. It's amazing. Excellent job on the title. Everybody congratulate them for, for uh, naming a, a Paint With Josh painting. This is actually painting number 726, guys. I can't believe we've painted this many paintings so far. 726 without burning out, right? Throw the old signature on there. And then this one's gonna go in the Etsy store if it hasn't been purchased. So go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and make your purchases today, right? So you can search for rising i like that title it's nice and short remember you guys can go over to youtube you can catch this tutorial on wednesday i have to edit it tonight and tomorrow and uh, get it up for wednesday so go to paint uh, youtube.com slash paint with josh right you can go follow me on facebook that's where we post all the pictures facebook is my next biggest audience compared to tiktok 
So facebook.com slash paint with Josh. We have 177 or 178,000 followers over there. Facebook.com slash paint with Josh. Of course, you guys are watching me over here on TikTok. But did you know my Instagram is the same? And that's paint with Josh K. It's the only two that have a K on the end. So of course, you can get all my paintings in my store which is paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I have over 700 sales. I'm an Etsy star seller for the last 13 months in a row, baby. So you got nothing to worry about. I get it, get your order processed in and out of door as fast as possible. I package everything in house. I have custom packaging that I get from Uline. I make my own boxes if I need to. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So let me know if you guys wanna see this one spun around. Hit me with a comment. We wanna see it, Josh. I just scrolled to this point, or I just tuned in right now, and I don't know what's on the backside of this canvas. Can you show us, please? Somebody's gotta hit me with a comment, though. If we don't have the comments, then we don't spin it. Let's see. We wanna see it. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Remember, you guys can go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy this painting and tons of other paintings, t-shirts, prints, hats, all sorts of stuff. And we almost forgot that this guy needs just a little highlight, just a little touch. Oh yeah, a couple of gorgeous little bits of white just hanging out on those old bushes back there, right? Very light pressure to get that paint to stick. Got a little of our liquid white, a little bit of our pressure, very textury little bit of flowers down around the front, very cool. Very cool. All right, let's throw the old family in. And like I said, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy t-shirts, hats, prints, posters, puzzles, pillows, all sorts of stuff. Literally tons of Paint With Josh merch, uh, logoed stuff, hats. I've got UFO mountain hats, stuff that doesn't have Paint With Josh logos on it. All sorts of things, any which wear. And all the support from you guys just helps go towards buying more canvases and more supplies and more things to create more free videos, all right? We do all this stuff for free. I don't get paid by anybody to come up here. I just get paid when you guys buy the paintings and when you support me through the Amazon shop and go to my Etsy store, right? That's how we make money. I don't get paid. I don't have a sponsorship where I come up here and, and paint. I literally do it for free for you guys to learn all the things that I struggled with and make them easier for you, right? Gotta make it easier for you, that's the key. Because if it's not easy, then you're not going to want to do it, right? If it's easy, then it becomes fun. And when it's fun, you want to do it more often. So, it's the first day in the studio. I don't have my mall stick in position. It's way back here. Let's see. All right, we're going to come over here and take the old liner brush with a little bit of liquid white. Uh, sorry, with a little bit of our odorless mineral spirits, our paint thinner. And come in just very lightly. Add the old bird family just like that. These birds represent myself, London, and our gorgeous daughter, Bailey. And they go into every painting as part of the signature. And Bailey's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so I gotta keep painting her bird bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, let's take the last little bit. We'll do it in dark. We won't have it stand out too much for this guy. We'll do it dark over here. So, come down like that. Sign this little guy here. And then, like I said, you can go find it in my Etsy store. And, uh, yeah. Have an excellent time browsing. Well guys, I've had a great time. I hope you did. I can't wait to see your version of this painting. So send it into facebook.com slash paint with Josh. Until I see you guys again next time. Take care. Have the rest of a good day and bye bye